Hello book people, P.T. Hilton here. I am going to today uh, talk about two YA fantasy books that I read recently. The first of the books is The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson. The Rhythmatist is the story of a young man named Joel. Um, he lives in this kind of crazy world where um, the United States is made up of a bunch of islands. And uh, the most dangerous of these islands is Nebraska, where uh, is kind of the heart of the wild magical beings that are kind of um, trying to take over the world. The only thing protecting uh, us from these, these uh, crazy creatures is the rhythmatists, who are these magicians who can, um, by drawing things on the ground, such as uh, circles with chalk, um, they can protect themselves, and they can also do things like draw, uh, like for instance, a dragon in chalk on the ground, make it come to life, and fight against the monsters. And the monsters are actually uh, chalk-based drawings as well that come to life and attack. So really interesting world, and um, one interesting thing about the magic system in this one is it's heavily math based. Like you have to, the, the rhythmatists have to study math for a long time before they can um, correctly do the magic because the magic is based around like having perfect circles and perfect angles. So geometry is key. So because of that, it would not be my favorite magic system to do. I don't want to be a rhythmatist. I'd rather be like a Mistborn or something if we're sticking in the Brandon Sanderson world. But a uh, very interesting magic system none nonetheless. I like this book a lot. It's my first um, kind of YA book by Brandon Sanderson. And he, did a, he did a good job with it. The world is just fascinating. Um, the map at the beginning is really cool that shows the, uh, the United States, the way it's broken up in islands. In fact, I'll put that up here somewhere now. My daughter is actually a bit young to read this book, but uh, she spent a good like 15 minutes one evening just looking at the map and asking me questions about the map and like where different things would be and trying to figure out which of the islands represented which of the current states in the United States. So that was fascinating as well. Um, Joel is a character. The main character was okay. He wasn't my favorite character, but I liked him enough that I was willing to follow him on his journey and I really liked the world and some of the things that have happened in it. And uh, I'm really interested to see what happens in the rest of the series as uh, Joel continues on his journey. Basically, his dream is to become a rhythmatist, but he failed the test to become a rhythmatist that everyone in the society takes when they're young. So um, he's banned forever from being a rhythmatist, but he's, he loves it so much and studies it so much that he knows a lot more about it than some of the actual rhythmatists, even though he can't actually do it himself. So it does make an interesting dynamic when, uh, when he's kind of like serving as sort of an advisor and like giving advice and stuff like that to other rhythmatists. Um, very interesting story, and I liked it a lot, and I'm looking forward to book two, which I think might come out um, either later this year or uh, in 2016. So I enjoyed that. The second book I read was Sawyer Jackson and the Long Land by Kevin Tumlinson. This was a book I heard about on the uh, TBR podcast recently, and I uh, thought I'd check it out. It's uh, by indie writer Kevin Tumlinson. I've seen a couple things written about him. He's he's uh, gaining some popularity and things like that, so I thought I'd check out his stuff. This book... Sawyer Jackson in the Long Land is a YA fantasy book, and it actually has a lot of similarities to The Rhythmatist, which is why I decided to talk about them together, because I think people who like The Rhythmatist would probably also like uh, Sawyer Jackson. Sawyer Jackson is this kid who grew up, he's being raised by his uh, grandparents, and they kept him like totally isolated, like on their, their little farm. They, uh, you know, homeschool him, but they also don't even like really ever let him leave the farm very often at all like he doesn't play with other kids every once in a while they might go on a little trip somewhere um, but the, those are few and far between by far most of his life is on this farm the crazy thing about this farm is it's got all these like little strings and knots hanging around all over the place um, well what Sawyer finds out very early in the book is that reality is actually made up of all kinds of knots and strings and and the way that things are tied together is how reality stays together and um, his grandmother is called a teth, short for tether, which is kind of like someone who can see that knot work and can affect it by making knots of their own and kind of tying it into the overall knot work. Um, Sawyer soon learns that he too is one of those uh, one of those people in that uh, his, his grandmother's kind of been protecting him uh, through his whole life from people who might be out to get him because of his powers. A lot of those knots that are hanging around are kind of to protect him. And um, then things start to get interesting as he discovers his power and starts learning how to tie these knots and starts figuring out how he can affect reality and that there's actually a whole bunch of different parallel and uh, alternate realities. And he starts 
realizing he can travel to some of these other places and that the creatures and people who are chasing him and after him are uh, going to kind of stop it at nothing and go to all these different realities to catch him and he kind of has to go on the run from them. Really interesting magic system, interesting story. Um, the whole thing of knot works and, and like changing reality by, by tying little knots in things uh, was really fascinating to me and, and uh, pretty original. I don't think I've ever read anything where it's done quite like that before. Um, I liked liked Sawyer as a character, and there's another really cool character um, named Sander Travels, who's kind of like a old wizened traveler who travels between realities, and uh, he was a great character as well. So I recommend if you like the Rhythm Test, maybe check out uh, Sawyer Jackson. I think you might like it as well. That's going to do it for me this week. I will be back next week, I think, with a review of um, Station Eleven, and um, I don't know what else. We'll find out. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.